and welcome to a new video where I am going to be giving you guys some very helpful statistics, super quick, uh, for you to make better trades on Polymarket. First of all, the reason I'm doing a lot of Polymarket content is I have found, for me personally at least, it has been the easiest platform to, to make money on. Uh, I've found of all types of trading, prediction markets probably give you the best odds of actually winning and making money. And a lot of that reason is because your counterparties aren't always the smartest. Let's dive right in into how smart are the counterparties really. This is updated information. I will be explaining everything. Uh, let's go. Four hours before markets resolve. That essentially means, look, if the market resolved at 7 in the morning, uh, what was the, the leading choice? Was it yes? Was it no? Uh, four hours before it ultimately resolved. Now, really not surprisingly, guys, 94% of the time, the leading option is going to win. That shouldn't be that surprising. That's uh, pretty obvious. 12 hours before, it's 90, and you can see the rest of them here, right? Another interesting thing that I found, guys, was that the vast majority of markets resolved to no. Um, and I think the reason that occurs is, first of all, a lot of poly market markets are not just like yes or no. You know, a lot of them are going to be five options where only one can resolve to yes and maybe four resolve to no. So that kind of makes sense with uh, yes, no and 50, 50 just about like never happens. Um, but most of the time markets aren't going to be yes. So it's 26%. It's 0% for 50, 50 and 74% for no, as you can see. And he puts it really, really well here. He said only 28% of markets resolve to yes. Now that number is 25.5. Now for the most interesting parts. So I found this to be pretty cool. Uh, right down here, you can look at this, but uh, this is the part that I found most interesting. Guys, most markets are overpriced. That's the thesis that he is making here. And I wanna show you just how you can take advantage of this. Um, he gives four biases why that might be you know, the case. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with herd mentality slash positive feedback loops. That might be it. Uh, if you, you can look up what a positive feedback loop is, and that will make sense. But let's go look at these buckets, and I'll explain them to you so we can all understand. Okay? So this is 12 hours before the ultimate resolution of an outcome. Okay? And what happened to the leading um, bucket or the leading decision, the leading market? What I mean by leading is imagine that there's a market that's 95% uh, odds yes and 5% odds no. And those odds were intact 12 hours before you know the market ultimately resolved that we call the leading market or the expected outcome essentially, right? Now here's the cool thing. So look at just how crazy a lot of these are. There are some massive mismatches. Did you know that when the expected percentage 12 hours before was at 98%, so that's trading at around 98 um, for yes, only 94% of the time did it actually resolve to yes. Now you can see these numbers really vary sometimes and they're kind of similar at other times. At extremes, they're very different, especially, you know, 9286 is absurd. What that means that, guys, when the odds were on average about 92, you know, uh, yeah, the actual percentage amount of time that it actually resolved to that option was only 86. That is a crazy market edge if you, to, if you were to repeat that over time, a very large market edge. You know, if you were always buying at 8%, which is the inverse of 92, of course, and you win 14% of the time, which is the inverse of 86%, you know, you'd be crushing the market, obviously, right? So you can see some mismatches here. Now let's go for much quicker. So this is four hours before, and the data is quite interesting. It's kind of all over the place because this is really soon to when something's about to occur. So... Um, uh, one mismatch that looks really weird, bizarre, is when the expected percentage was 62%, it only resolved to yes 53% of the time. Th that is very strange. Uh, very, very wild. And yeah, it kind of, it varies a lot, as you can see here. And here, it's the same thing. When the expected percentage is 67%, it only resolved to yes 60% of the time. And you get a lot of these. I think, guys, the reason this occurs is markets that are competitive kind of like 50-50, but the leading market's like a 60%, 65%, 55%. They're going to resolve um, a lot less often than you might think, as you can see here, which is quite quite interesting. You know, when the expected percentage of an outcome was 51%, it only resolved to yes 45% of the time. Just 
really, really, really interesting things. And then there's some bizarre outliers, like people buying at 37%, it only resolved to yes 26% of the time. And you can see a lot of these statistics that I'm gonna link before um, down there. So this is, I believe, non-sporting markets, or it might be including sporting markets, but I think mostly non-sport, because uh, obviously sports are gonna be very, very different, of course. We're gonna get into sports too, which is fascinating. I can't wait to show you that. But one thing to learn from the four hours before, four hours before the competitive markets of like 50 or 60, don't, aren't really, if the odds are at two thirds, one third, it looks like it only expires to yes, like 50, 55% of the time. Let's go over into sports, okay? So this is one hour after, you know, six hours before, how often the um, underdog versus, you know, what's it called? Uh, leader or uh, favorite is going to win the game. So one hour, one hour after start, um, you know, what tends to happen to the actual outcome? Well, one hour after start time, the leading team or the team that's more likely to win uh, wins 80% of the time. Really not surprising. Game start time. This is really simple, guys. Just which which team has a higher probability of winning? That's it. So this is saying that across a gajillions of markets that probably the market has done, um, about 72% of the time, the favorite's going to win. Not surprising. A little bit higher than I think, but really not too surprising, I guess. Because a lot of sport markets are just going to be one team that's like 95%, another team that's like 5%. And you can see one day before a game starts, the accuracy gets really, really, really low, as you can see. So let's go look at some game market accuracy stuff. Five minute intervals after start time, as you can see here, percent predicted um, correctly. Obviously, one 140 minutes after, 150 minutes after the game started, the team that's winning or the team that's more likely to win, as implied by the odds, wins 95.6% of the time. Not too surprising there, as you can see. And now, finally, we can see some here refining accuracy metrics by excluding outlier markets priced above 90 and below 10. We can see accuracy with other sport markets. Yeah, so what this is essentially doing, guys, is just looking at everything that's not like above 90% and below 10% to show you more competitive things. Okay, so as you can see here, four hours before the markets resolve, excluding outliers, 85% uh, of the time, the leading market wins. As you can see here, one week before, one month before, um, 12 hours before. So what have I learned? What have we learned from the sport markets? Well, what we've learned from sports versus non-sports is that, guys, it seems like with sport markets on poly market, they're a lot more efficient than you might think. It just seems like these are pretty accurate uh, to reality, as you can see with just a lot of these metrics, which might make it seem like there's not as much edge to actually beat poly market with sports betting. You still can. I mean, I've been able to, but maybe not as much especially because a lot of these accuracies are pretty much in line with what actually ended up as the outcome, as you can see, right? I think that the, uh, you know, the most interesting part was, is this right here, which is the poly market actual versus expected outcome. So from this research, what have you learned? Well, what, have you, what you have learned is that with sports, uh, poly market is decently efficient. They're gonna have, a, they're gonna do a pretty good job of actually pricing these markets uh, and, you know, the team that's that's winning or the team that's favored to win wins about 71.6% of the time, not surprising. And six hours before, you probably wanna bet the underdog. And right before the game starts, you wanna bet the favorite. Okay, now with non-sport markets, non-sports markets, really things are wild. Uh, with markets that you can't really price, you can't really get outside data to price a lot of things, like will Kanye launch a, a coin? Stuff like that, who knows what the price is? There's no way to actually get true value for that. And if you look here, a lot of the times people make the mistake of, you know, 62% they buy yes, and only 53% of the time does it actually resolve to that outcome. And you can see a lot of interesting statistics here. I thought this was pretty cool. I hope you did too. Hopefully this will make you a little bit of a better poly market trader. And it shows you that betting long odds or betting the underdog can be a bit better especially in this bracket right here where it's like you're buying at like 30% or 40%. Uh, it seems like things go your way a lot more often than you might think. Um, instead of just going with a herd of just buying, you know, the 92% outcome. With that, happy trading. If this was helpful, let me know in the comments section and uh, hopefully this will help you make more money. See you guys.